Fresh developments in rear wing end plate technology seen at the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka at the weekend. Stuart Codling, talk us through what we saw at Suzuka. Some teams moving forward in this area and one team reverting to old technology in this avenue of development. I, th I think it boils down to developments in CFD not actually delivering any benefits in real life or not actually delivering the benefits that were expected. Uh, this all hinges upon a grey area in the regulations surrounding the rear wing end plates. Basically the, the bottom mounting of the wing is narrower than the top than the upper element of the wing itself. The, so there has to be a transition, you see it as a curve. The rules governing what happens in that area are slightly grey and McLaren last year were the first to introduce quite aggressive looking strakes in that area with a view to managing the wake turbulence and perhaps reducing the drag penalty for any given level of downforce. Because that was a grey area, a lot of teams saw that because it's very clear and obvious on the car, so they thought we'll do that as well. What's interesting is that while McLaren persisted with that design throughout this season, a lot of other teams have chopped and changed. Mercedes particularly have uh, gone back to a much flatter end plate design at faster circuits. They've only kept the strakes on for slow speed circuits. So what you can infer from that is that probably this isn't actually delivering the reduction in turbulence that was anticipated. What it is doing is creating downforce, but it might also be producing drag in and of itself. Now, McLaren have confessed that their car is more draggy, so it's interesting that this double header, uh, Sochi and uh, Suzuka, they've reverted to their flatter end plate design. So once again, I, th I think we'll look on this as maybe a CFD induced um, blind alley, or it could be that we see more developments next year that actually uh, find the benefit 